Good morning. Good morning to my sisters and my brothers in Christ. I hope everybody is good out there. Um, I hope that you are blessed by the best. And today is going to be a simple word. We're going to start with what are you asking God for? What are you praying for? Uh, beloved children, sisters and brothers, what are you praying for? Um, God wants to answer your prayer, but got to be in alignment to his will for you. So um, let's pray before we get started. Father God in heaven, this is me, your child, Taisha. Lord, I come to you in the name of Jesus, Lord, with my sisters and my brothers in Christ. And Lord, we need to get some clarification and some understanding of our prayers and what are we asking you for, Lord. Lord, I rebuke any antichrist spirit, any pathon spirit that try to come up against me or uh, my viewers, Lord. Lord, I ask that you mute me, my way of thinking, my way of talking, Lord. I ask that you come forth and you deliver the message to your children, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Thank you, Lord. I praise you. I worship you. I know something good is going to happen for you today, Lord. Some people are going to get saved today, Lord. So something good is going to happen for you today, God. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Oh, yeah. Um, I, this is my second time doing this video because my girl, she got a habit of, like, she just want to walk right in time I get into it. But I ain't going to let that bother me. I come back and I'm going to still make it happen. And uh, I'm going uh, I'm to get to the verse where I got this from. It's in Second Chronicles. But right now we're just going to go into the message. Okay, beloved children. God want to know, what are y'all praying for? What are you praying for? Um, God wants to give you your the desires of your heart. And before he can do that, he needs you to get in alignment and he needs you to have his heart and his thoughts. And some of you may be like, man, what? You know, <laughs> like, you know, I got to, you know, what I want, what he might want, what might not be what I want. I might want that new car. I might want that new house. I might want um that, that new job. I might want mm, that beautiful wife and that uh, handsome husband. You know, what you... I might want that new baby, or I might want a baby, period. All good and well. God want to give you the desires of your heart. He does. But here's the catch. This is where I think a lot of people are getting mixed up on. And um, I don't know if I prayed, but let me pray because I don't remember. Because I jumped right into it. Well, no, I think I prayed. My baby, my baby didn't throw me out so bad. That's why I really, I, it, to me, uh, I'm happy for them to go back to school. You know, I trust that God got them and that they will be isolated and they will deal with them the best. We have a covenant. We'll uh, pray it up and uh, God will go to school with her. That's what I believe. And she will be fine because the distractions are unbelievable when I'm trying to do these videos. And I've never been distracted like this in my life. Not when I'm trying to do something for God. So I don't know if I'm afraid or not, but I assume that I have. But anyway, y'all, um... What you're praying for, pretty much what we're talking about. Um, God want to give you the desires of your heart. He does. But he wanted to be in alignment with his will and what he has for you and for me. So what we what God would like for us to do is ask for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Let's start there. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and being able to discern um, what is good and what is evil. So right now, I pray that for you in Jesus' name, Lord. I ask that all of my viewers have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, Lord, and that they are able to make wise decisions, I, that they're able to learn your ways so they can be able to use wisdom to implement, the, implement your ways into their life while they make decisions in the name of Jesus. So to break it down, knowledge is going to be... Um, Things that are in, in the Bible, you're going to have to get in the Bible. Uh, so when you are reading the Bible, you can, well, from the parables and different things that you read, you can understand, okay, what is God trying to tell me? What is God trying to say? And then you until so you can be able to, that's going to be the knowledge. The information is the knowledge. The wisdom is going to be how you're going to use the information that you are given through the Bible or through uh, elders, people that may uh, live a long time before you and can give you that, that you see with the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Because what I want to get y'all to understand is that just because somebody is older than you does not mean that they have a lot of wisdom. I'm sorry I have found that out because a lot of people feel like because they're older, they might have wisdom in certain situations. 
True enough, they, they, they do. They do may have, but sometimes you still need to know what the word of God is because what they feel like may be right may not be what's right for you and what God wants you to do. So you're going to have to get in your Bible. Like I said, if you can start in John, start in John. And then ask the Holy Spirit, hey, lead me to uh, other chapters you may want me to read, you know, because he's going to minister to you as he see fit. He might have somebody else to go to. And like I started in John. So that was easy for me. I used to try to do it in Genesis and go all the way through. That was not working for me. I had the hardest time with understanding the Bible and understanding um, how to read the Bible. And I just would put it down for years. That just didn't work for me. So I just got to a point, I believe in 2020, um, that I just got to a point maybe six months ago of just saying, okay, go out where you want me to start. And um, he says, okay, start in June. And when I started John, John told uh, the story of like Jesus and what he came in in the world to do and to bring division and not, you know, bring the sword, bring division, make you choose a side, you know, make you stop living for the devil. Are you going to live for the devil? Or are you going to live for, uh, for God? So that's what Jesus was all about for you to just come in, let's, you know, shake some things up and let's figure out what you want to do. But um, back to the topic. The topic is what are you praying for? You know, some of you, God said it's praying for all the wrong things. I'm just going to go and be in a job praying for everything but the things that you need. You need wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You need to be able to discern what is good and what is evil you do. Because if you have that, then you can know what decisions to make. Like, for example, before I had wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, I would make the same choices over and over and over, the same decisions over and over and over and over. So, you know, in this life, we have a choice. We can live for God or we can live for Satan. Satan's over this whole earth, him and his army, his people. So that's why so much temptation and so much evil is done here on earth. So it's just like hell on earth, pretty much. And then, but we have a choice to live godly as well. It's up to us what we want to do. I choose to live godly. And I feel like anybody that view my videos, they choose to live godly. You choose to live a godly life. And that's what we're here trying to do. And what I'm trying to do in this day and age is that certain things that you may think that you already know, you may not know. And God may want to refresh us all on um, learning. And like I said, I'm a younger woman. I could be doing anything in the world um, right now. But I'm here to go back, reteach other things in the Bible, uh, bring an understanding to you that you may never have. So right now, uh, God is asking you, what side do you choose? Do you want to rock with him and live a godly life? Or do you want to rock with Satan and go around in circles and live um, a wicked life? A life where you are um, fornicating, uh, drinking, smoking. Um, you're just being evil, um, sowing discord. I'm um, talking about people putting your mouth on people. Um, just cursing God, uh, being angry with God and um, just... Just wilding out, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Because we all are going to, like, even the people that live in God, they're trying to live God. We all going to fall short. We all going to sin. But God's chosen people, the remnant, is what I want you all to be. What I want you to do is to, day by day, die to self. Like, I'm sorry, y'all. Whatever you used to do that you know was not of God, put that away. Let's put that away now. Let's jump on the winning team. And the winning team is God's team. I just come to y'all. I'm just like the spokesperson. I'm the one that's like like saying, hey, let's 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 stop it. Let's stop doing what we've been doing. Let's do things right. Even with our prayers. Um, because he gave me this message, I think, last night, really. And I've been reading on it, just trying to get into it in this second career. Second Chronicles, I'm well, going to say Corinthians, I must be to read Corinthians over, but Second Chronicles. And what it's talking about is when I first got in it, David has passed away, he was king, and now his son Solomon is king. And what it seems like it's going to, because I'm on chapter 14, and I got to go all the way to like, I try to read the whole thing. And I think it's like 34 chapters, but um, I'm going to break it down. And every time I, I'm, I'm in Second Chronicles, though, I believe, for today and tomorrow and maybe the next day, because it's going to take me a little time because I don't have the time to actually process the words of God to understand what he's saying. But so far, it seems like what I'm getting is that he's saying that um, Solomon is king and um, he's king now behind his dad, David. And Solomon is asking 
for wisdom and knowledge and understanding. And for him asking, he asked for wisdom and knowledge. And by him asking for that, God is like, oh, sure, this one, yeah, you got it. He said, but not only since your heart just wanted an understanding heart, you just want to know. You know, since you just want to know, I'll give you riches, I'll give you positions, and I'll give you honor. And I'll give you the, I'll give you more than any man that's had before you, that uh, any man that that, had, that will have after you. Like, and David was supposed to be his man, the man, his dad. He was a king before him, remember, and David was well known. So he's like, I'll make you, you, you thought your daddy was something. Wait till they see what I do with you. But that's what, his, that's what he did for Solomon. So what he wants us to know is that Let's stop with the prayers of, oh, Lord, I want, I need this money. He know you need money. Lord, I need to pay this bill. Um, and how about let's just start saying, Lord, thank you for these financial blessings. Lord, thank you for this new car. Let's give him some things. Because a lot of stuff is already done. Let's be thankful for the things that we do have. You know, it really does work because God, like, yeah, making me to be this genie. Then when I'm not doing what you want me to do with what you want, now you feel like you're, I'm not worthy to be praised. Thank you, Jesus. He said, once I'm not doing what you want me to do, now you want to take back my honor and, my, and profane my name. Like, you don't want to praise me. You don't want to praise me because I won't give you exactly what you want. But you got to understand this. He says, I am God and I know what I want for you and I know your heart. So a lot of things I can't give you because if I gave it to you, you would never praise me. You would never worship me. So what God is asking you all today, me, you, everybody, what he wants us to do is let's Take it down. Let's go back to the basics. And let's ask for wisdom and knowledge. Because with wisdom and knowledge, we can make better decisions and we can discern what God is asking us to do in his time. You know, we need wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Even when I read the Bible, I say, Lord, give me wisdom, knowledge, and understanding because I want to know what you're saying to me. Because I don't, if I don't know, I can't go and tell nobody else something that I don't know. So, so far in Second Chronicles, he's asking us to Ask for wisdom and knowledge. It's like y'all asking for everything else, but it, with the thoughts that I can give y'all, I can tell y'all about money and how to how to make money, <clears throat> how to make money. I can give you ideas. I can meet you. <clears throat> I'm sorry, right where you are, but y'all come to me for some of the wildest stuff that don't have nothing to do with me. Then if I don't give it to you, you mad at me as if I'm not the God that I said that I was. And he said we can't be doing it, and now he wants me to read the scriptures. Once again, it's Second Chronicles, and it's Solomon's prayer for wisdom. And he's just letting you know what Solomon is saying. So, I think like I need to read the whole thing because this is where this this is where this is coming from. Like, you really need to get this because the prayers that y'all are asking are bogus. <laughs> so, okay, Solomon prayer for wisdom. In in that night, God appeared to Solomon and said to him, "Ask what I shall give you." And Solomon said to God, you have shown great and steadfast love to David, my father, and have made me king in his place. Oh, Lord God, let your word to David, my father, be now fulfilled. For you have made me king over people as numerous as the dust of the earth. Give me now wisdom and knowledge to go out and come in before this people. But who can govern this people of yours, which is so great? So he just saying, you did so much great things for my dad. He said, you know, now give me wisdom and knowledge so I can be able to fulfill his shoes. That's what, that's what, that's what the son is asking the father because he want to be able to do what his dad was able to do. He want to know but he, what he need to understand. He's like, I don't, I don't know how to come to these people. I don't know what to say to them. You know, I don't, I don't know because I'm, you know, I'm just coming in behind my dad. Like some of you, you know, you might follow in the footsteps of your mother or your father, and they might have some big shoes to fill. So it said, God answered Solomon, because this was in your heart, and you have not asked, asked for possessions, wealth, wealth, honor, or the life of those who hate you. So he said, you ain't asked for wealth, possessions, honor. You ain't even asked for me to kill the people that hate you. He said, so since you didn't done that, since you have not done that, who hate you and have not even asked for a long, then he said, you didn't even ask for a long life. He said, some people ask me, ask for a long, they want to live forever. He said, but you, you know, we all, you're going to live forever. You're going to have to turn your life. That's another subject. But he said, you didn't even ask for all that. He said, but you have asked. 
for wisdom and knowledge for yourself that you may govern my people over whom I have made you king. He says, okay, you ask me for something like that. <laughs> hey, you you know, I'm, I'm proud. It made me feel good. He said, wisdom and knowledge are granted to you. It's done. It's done. They're granted to you. He said, I will also give you riches, possessions, and honor, such as none of the kings had who were before you. Now, you know what? That just gave me something. Every time I read the Bible, and you may do this too, we always ask me for wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Every time we read, we already got it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We ain't got to ask that anymore. So whatever you read, when you read this Bible and God give you and you understand what he's saying, roll with that because you have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Now, you don't have to doubt anymore. Thank you, Holy Spirit. But that was for me too because I might say it every time. Lord, give me wisdom, knowledge, and understanding because I'm still learning and I don't want to make a mistake and tell you guys anything wrong. So, okay. Okay, so he said, because you, okay, now I will also, say, now I will also, he said, he granted you the wisdom and knowledge. That's done. He said, but I will also, I will also give you riches, possessions, and honor, such as none of the kings had who were before you, and none after you shall have, have, have the like. So nobody but before you, and nobody that's coming after you, it won't have what you had. Because you didn't even want all that what they wanted. So I judge your heart because your heart is the way that it is. I got you. So Solomon came from the high place at, at Gilbon from before the tent of the meeting to Jerusalem. And he reigned over Israel. All right now. So I'm going to stop there with the verses and go back to what I'm telling y'all. That's the message. That's what, what it's coming from. God said. Let's take away the, I want, like I said, the money, the car, the job. He said, let's be thankful right where we are. Let's start with the basics. Let's ask God for wisdom and knowledge. We just say, Lord, give me wisdom and knowledge. You know, I need to make better decisions. Like uh, once upon a time, I would, let's use for example, date the same type of guys. The same. And everybody did the same Thing. They were the same way to me. It's a repeat offender. Just not worth my time. But wisdom from the God would let you, when you meet someone and they remind you of someone from your past that was a fool, <laughs> a fool, you would say, you can look at them and you would tell them and you would know not to go there. So now you're using your wisdom from God and you know. That was not good for me. That situation took me out of character and held me up from what God had for me. So I'm not going to deal with that type of person anymore. That's wisdom. Because you know, you you now you're using what God has given you. You're not making the same mistakes like bumping your head, just bumping your head over like it's in, in the world and in, um, but the dictionary term would be insane, insanity. And that would be doing the same thing over and over and over and respecting a different result. See, when you ask for wisdom and knowledge, God is going to give, especially discernment. Yes, my heart. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and discernment to discern what is good and what is evil. Now you'll be able to, it's some people that, even though I'm male, they'll try to talk to me and I can look at them and say that they're not even worth knowing my name. No offense, but uh, you don't even need to know me because if I let you and I allow you into my life, you're not at all going to help me to prosper. You're going to be a problem. You're going to be a problem. So you need to be able to look at people and know you're a problem and I don't need to do this. You need to be able to go somewhere and know that, okay, if you could choose a daycare for your child, you need to be able to discern the spirits that was in that daycare and know that my baby don't need to be left here. You see what I'm saying? So it's like God can give you this stuff, and with this insight that He gives you, then He might give, He might say, "Okay, now you need some money. Um, sowing in this person, sowing that person. He might test your obedience. Then He might also say, get some life insurance, and it might make He might tell you the people get their life insurance home. And through you doing that, it might be well, well you need some money. You done paid up that life insurance where you can borrow some money, a big enough amount of money where you don't have to borrow from people. You can go and borrow from yourself. You know what I'm saying? He might teach you to make wiser decisions with the money that you get. So it's like you got to, you know, let's get to the basics. But like you're asking for these 
wonderful materialistic things, but he said, no, I need for you to edify my kingdom. I need for you to get some money and feed the homeless people. I need for you to clothe them. Even if you know everybody ain't going to preach and minister, everybody ain't going to start a YouTube channel, everybody is not going to have a church. That's fine. But what you can be doing, you can do random acts of kindness. But one time he had me where I wrote, I picked out cards. It was only like 10 cards. I got, I'm going to do that again. 10 cards. And we asked him, Lord, how I know who to get a card to? And he said, we're going to get a card to everybody in white cards. So I said, well, I ain't going to go to nobody's house in their yard. I said, but if they're in a parking lot and they don't see me, I will write a little note on the card and just tell them Jesus love them. Give them just an inspirational card. It's a card. You know, Jesus love you. Whatever that was led to in the spirit for me to do. I write it out on there. And I promise y'all, I went up to my daughter's school. When I went to the school, it was two white cars just sitting there. <laughs> y'all can't tell me God ain't real. Two white cars sitting there. I said, okay, it's time. So I hurry up, got out my car, and I put the cards on the two white cards. Skid out because I don't want, at this time before I, before I knew I was going to preach or be on YouTube, I ain't know that. So I was just like, I wanted to serve God, but I ain't want nobody to know. It was like I wanted to be like a little angel that he was using, that it was me, but I was in disguise, like it was a secret, you know? But he said, come on from out of hide, and you've been hiding too long, and then bam. I'm out here. But that's what I was doing. So I did that. And then I went to like Grizz or Piggly Wiggly. And he had two white trucks <laughs> parked right there. I said, now, if anybody can see me, I knew that that wasn't the car. I knew that not to do it there. Because I like the, the goal was for me to be unseen. Like I asked him, I said, let it be a parking lot. Or uh, let it be, you know, let me know where it is, where, where to go. And I would just ride. And where I would see any white car at, where nobody would see me, nobody was in the parking lot, I would sneak, get my little cars. I had already made them up. And I'm going to do that again. I had already made them up. And I sit them on, I sit them on the truck, ski it out. You know, I did it to like 10 cars. So I was done. I want to do that again. Somebody else may like to do that. I did that. Something else that I did that was secret. He had me um, buy my neighbors. I wanted to get them some love. And I went to Bath and Body Works and bought the mom and, and all the daughters a gift set. Like a little nice. Because I, I, I feel like if I'm going to give, I'm going to get the best. Even when I feed the homeless. Y'all, they eat what I eat in, house, in my house. I make shrimp and chicken and fried out. This is where it started from. Shrimp, you give good too, y'all. Give good. Don't give people hot dogs and chips. Because if you was homeless, it's nice. But if you was homeless, when you want a hot, you'll be like, oh, thank you Lord for the hot dog and chips. Don't get me wrong. But when you prefer some garlic bread and some Alfredo and a little salad on the side with maybe uh, a drink, when you be like, oh, God is, oh, I love him. Because you was homeless and you didn't have nothing and you was finna eat something out the trash. So then somebody should serve you something like that. Like, come on. So it's like, give your best. Like, don't don't short nobody with giving. Like, give your best. But what came from is I was doing red beans and rice with shrimp in it and cornbread for my family. And they didn't really want nothing. So I said, you know what? You know, I'm going to give it to the homes. So I got some little plates and I fixed it up. And then God said, that's what I'm talking about. Give them your best. So I ended up frying them some chicken wings or something. So they had chicken fried chicken wings. They had the red beans and rice with the sausage and the shrimp in it. And then they had cornbread mother. Any person in the world, you know, we from the South. So this is Southern mind. We love that. You know what I'm saying? So I got down there and them homeless people that said they were so it, it would make them feel so I got chills right now. I gotta feed them. I gotta feed them. I'm I'm gonna feed them time. I'm a, I might cook today. Uh because I'm uh, it's, I'm ministering to myself. God is ministering, you know, see y'all. When I be talking to y'all, he be talking to me. <laughs> so I need to feed the homeless. But yeah, uh, you know, give your best. You know, stop giving people like trash that you don't want. Give your best. And with the homeless people, like, I got some. My thing, we're going to take them some clothes. My brother got a bunch of clothes. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That's in there that he don't care about. And um, I'm asking him what he want to donate. And I'm just going to take it down there to the homeless people. They be downtown in the square here in my city in Mobile, Alabama. Or they be down there in the square and like at the park laid out. I love, that's where it started. Like, my passion. I started in the field and I got to get back in the field because I'm really a field. Like this is nice and everything what I'm doing. And I thank God for this, but he know that I'm a person that I like to get in the field. I like to get out there and um, walk up to you. I like to bring you something to eat. I like to give you money. You know, I like, you ever see, give a homeless person anything over $5. <laughs> they be like, 
ooh, and you feel so good. Like, you know, I might, I might go out there and hand out 20s. You know, you know, I don't have much, but I wish I know I had more because I love it. I just like to see their faces. Because they like, people think that we're nothing. We out here. One man was just like, I want to see you come down the street more. And uh, I'm going to have to get back out in the field, y'all. Because I love being out there. Like, this is nice. I love you guys. But that's what my heart is. My heart is, you know, bringing. I might need, matter of fact, I got some cover. I'm going to wash it. Thank you, Lord. And I, I'm thinking. I'm thinking about what I like to do and what God need me to do. I got cover and stuff. I go out there, I wash it up. I might buy them some new cover. Take it out there. You know what? Because you know they're going to have to have cover. You know, they might need jackets. It's going to get cold. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. So you see what I'm saying? God will give you ideas on what you can do with your money. So I might buy some jackets, you know, I might buy some jackets. I might can't buy no more than about four of them at a time, but I might get some coats uh, for them. They can have where they can be a little cold. Maybe they won't be cold. Give them some blankets. Um, Anything that I can do, bring some food. I said I was going to do care package. It's time for me to get back to what I was doing. But I thank the Holy Spirit. I didn't mean to come into that, but I had to let y'all know. You know, it's real. And um, he know that's what I get my pleasure from. Like the videos, this is nice. This is cool. This is a blessing from God. I never thought that I would be on a platform where I would be doing a video because I'm one of one of those sneaking by you some type of person. You know, I like to go and do stuff. I like to, you know, see their faces and they'd be so grateful, man. They'd be so grateful. So let's pray because I got to do, I got to study for another message. Um, And I got to get out to y'all. Probably today, maybe I think it's gonna be tomorrow because I oh, I didn't get excited and I wanna I wanna cook some now so I might make a lasagna a lasagna we like lasagna so okay thank you Jesus thank you Holy Spirit let's pray Father God in heaven I come to you in the name of Jesus Lord thank you for all the ideas and the thoughts and maybe these thoughts that I had that you gave me they can do because everybody ain't gonna do the same thing, but all that matters is that we do something for you and for your people. And Lord, you said we do your work and we handle your business, then you, then you got us and you're going to handle our business. So right now, Lord, I just thank you. Thank you for bringing back my fire and for letting me know what was so dear to my heart, what I could be doing, Lord. I thank you. You're so good. And I love you. I praise you. And I keep doing whatever you want me to do. I don't care what everybody else did, but I won't leave you. I won't forsake you. I won't turn back. I won't. Like, you got me. You got a real soldier right here on your team. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So, thank y'all. I'm blushing now. Whenever I get, get in it like that. Hey, I gotta do a little, this my little, you know, cause see, I'm young, so instead of me doing all that little stuff like that, I like to go like this, you know, God said you can shake a little shoulder, that's my, that's my little holy go dance, so if y'all want to get in the holy ghost, y'all yeah, feel it, do the bank head bounce, that's what I think it is, <laughs> for the Lord, no, you ain't got to twerk, no, but you can, you gotta be a little silly, say, be yourself, so I'm excited, now, now I want to go and Get some gift bags and pass them out. You need to stop raining. If it's stop raining for a little bit, I can go on and do something today for the food for them. Uh, because like I said, it brings me so much joy when I pull up on a street and they just like, oh, we're going to get some. But you, oh, yeah, y'all going to get some. But all right, now I love y'all. Be blessed by the best. And y'all get out there and serve. Serve for the God. Stop asking for when you do get some money, like people that get food stamps and all that. Go cook, cook a big meal. Cook a nice meal like you're doing something for Thanksgiving. Go pass it out to them. And they want to say, what it is you can do on a plate? I put Jesus love you. Like, I don't preach, preach to them. I don't make nobody stand there and read a prayer out in front of me and pray in front. I don't pray with people out out in public. I don't do that either. But I put Jesus love you. And I be like, you are loved. Anything that just get a motivation that God did this. Because it's not me. I'm just the vessel. And I try to be obedient. When you hear something to do, do it. Do it. You know, like I said, and I said, give your best. You know, don't always think you got to give the people in your family. Charity do starts at home. But some people in your family, they really are already straight. They be good. So sometimes go out to people that you know don't have nothing. So what if it's something nice you're giving them? Give your best. Like, you want nice stuff back. So if you want nice stuff back, give out nice stuff. And don't think they're nothing. Amen. All right now, y'all. Bye-bye.